All right, class. Wanted to post a little demo for how to get some of the descriptive statistics that are required from chapter three and four. The nice thing with JASP is it really puts everything kind of in the same spot for much of our introductory work. So we're going to open a file and uh, you are going to download this file. The link is provided in the assignment, right? So under the lab portion of the class, you can find the link that goes to this .sav file. These open up directly in JASP. You see that we now have a variety of variables we're dealing with, and there's quite a few people in this data set. But the nice thing with a program like this, even having thousands of cases as we do here, it's not an issue because the program can compute it all very quickly. So just like last week, everything we need is still under descriptives and descriptive statistics. And of course, it's looking to compute your results as soon as you click over here. We can very quickly get all of our variables. And all I did there was click on the first, hit the shift key, and click on the last. As in other, <coughs> excuse me, as in other computer programs, what this does is multi-selects. So you can select everything all at once, slide them all over together. JASP has already done the analyses for many of these things. You notice that it gives us the mean standard deviation, minimum and maximum by default. Now, there are some other values you're going to want to consider here. So as you're going to learn, right, we have the three central tendencies we're considering in our class, the mean, the median, and the mode. We also learned about the range and the IQR, standard deviation, the variance. We're not going to worry about the min and max right now. We'll just get the range values. So here we have central tendency, mean, median, and mode. And here we have measures of dispersion. So if you remember watching the lecture, you always want to think about the scale of measure for each variable when you're trying to decide which descriptive statistic to use. So in this case, your job is really easy as far as getting the computation done in JASP. We've already done it. But now we need to go through and identify the appropriate values based upon how these measures are evaluated. So basically here, you've got these things broken down. If it has this little ruler next to it, um, if it's been coded, in these cases, these have, it is telling you that this is a scale variable, which means interval ratio. Now it's got these other variables which are showing you that they're categorical and there's like bar chart stack. So you can think about sex is gonna be measured male, female, that type of thing. We can look at some of these details on back on our variable view as well if you want to. So for each of these, you can click on the value and it tells you male, female is how that's measured. If I click on race, it'll tell me how that's measured. And so that I can see those are all categories, right? Now we can go back over using these arrows to our analysis. So if you want to take a look at these variables to get a sense of whether or not they might be better considered ordinal or nominal, then looking through them would be useful there. So you want to bear in mind that if you have a nominal variable, the mode is the best measure of central tendency. If you have something that is measured on an ordinal scale, then the best measure of central tendency is the median. If you have something that is interval ratio, the mean is probably the ideal choice. If you had a really high skew, you might want to consider the median as well, as it will not be as affected by the skew as the mean. Of course, you know from last week how to evaluate skewness and kurtosis very quickly. And again, fairly normal, right? Not perfectly normal, fairly normal. We can consider within plus or minus three for skewness and kurtosis. So we could look through these variables and for the ones that we say are scale, we could evaluate their skewness and kurtosis to choose between the mean and the median as the better choice. Now, when you're talking about things that are nominal for measures of dispersion, there's really not something you can do to summarize the variability very well. All you can do is kind of say, well, this percent was female, this percent was male. And the higher percent, of course, is the mode, and that's really all there is to it. For things that are ordinal, you would want to consider the range and the IQR. And of course, the SIQR just means divide the IQR by two. 
So it's pretty easy to get that from the IQR given here. If things are interval ratio, you're going to want to consider the standard deviation, the variance. Of course, these two together would be redundant because the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So this gives you an idea, all the values you could need, and you can quickly get the measures of central tendency and dispersion that you could need. And then it's just a matter of selecting the right ones, identifying the scale of measure for each of these variables, which as we've discussed previously, is really a critical thing for you as the human part of this equation to do. Hopefully that helps you give some sense of how to use JASP to perform the lab. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.